rejoicing in my saving God. Who looks upon me in my state, and all the world will call me blessed. For God works marvels in my sight, and, and holy, holy is God's name.
podcast is brought to you by Mr. and Mrs. Nicolas Padillo and Family, Mr. and Mrs. Alfred and Julie Go and Family, Mr. and Mrs. Rene and Nanit Avila and Family, Engineer Frederick and Mrs. Wanda Fekabahog and Family. On this ladies, on our ladies Saturday, we also celebrate the solemnity of the Nativity of Saint John the Baptist. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And be your spirit. Friends, with humble hearts, let us now recall our sinfulness. And we beg the Lord to heal us with His mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy.
let us pray. O God, who raised up St. John the Baptist to make ready a nation fit for Christ the Lord, give your people, we pray, the grace of spiritual joys and direct the hearts of all the faithful into the way of salvation and peace. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Hear me, O coastlands. Listen, O distant peoples. The Lord called me from birth, from my mother's womb. He gave me my name. He made of me a sharp-edged sword and concealed me in the shadow of his arm. He made me a polished arrow in his quiver he hid me. You are my servant, he said to me, Israel, through whom I show my glory. Though I thought I had toiled in vain and for nothing uselessly spent my strength, yet my reward is with the Lord. My recompense is with my God. For now the Lord has spoken who formed me as a servant from the womb, that Jacob may be brought back to him, and Israel gathered to him. And I am made glorious in the sight of the Lord, and my God is now my strength. It is too little, he says, for you to be my servant, to raise up the tribes of Jacob and restore the survivors of Israel. I will make you a lie to the nations that my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord.
reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days, Paul said, God raised up David as their king. Of him he testified, I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. He will carry out my every wish. From this man's descendants, God, according to his promise, has brought to Israel a Savior, Jesus. John heralded his coming by proclaiming a baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. And as John was completing his course, he would say, what do you suppose that I am? I am not he. Behold, one is coming after me. I am not worthy to unfasten the sandals of his feet. My brothers, children of the family of Abraham, and those others among you, who are God-fearing. To us, this word of salvation has been sent. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Salutation from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. When the time arrived for Elizabeth to have her child, she gave birth to a son. Her neighbors and relatives heard that the Lord had shown his great mercy toward her, and they rejoiced with her. When they came on the eighth day to circumcise the child, they were going to call him Zechariah after his father. But his mother said in reply, No, he will be called John. But they answered her, There is no one among your relatives who has this name? So they made signs, asking his father what he wished him to be called. He asked for a tablet and wrote, John is his name. And all were amazed. Immediately his mouth was opened, his tongue freed, and he spoke, blessing God. Then fear came upon all their neighbors, and all these matters were discussed throughout the hill country of Judea. All who heard these things took them to heart, saying, What then will this child be? For surely the hand of the Lord was with him. The child grew and became strong in spirit, and he was in the desert until the day of his manifestation to Israel. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, the solemnity of the Nativity of St. John the Baptist is a liturgical distinction accorded to the precursor of the Messiah. This honor, St. John the Baptist shares only with two other important personalities in so far as Christian cult is concerned. Behinom dumikin ninyo, kinsa may laingi sa ulo ka simbahan ang birthday nga solemnity yun. That's right. First would be the solemnity of the Nativity of Our Lady, September 8. The other one, the solemnity of the Nativity of the Lord, December 25. And today, June 24, the solemnity of the Nativity of St. John the Baptist. Only three personalities are accorded such liturgical honor. Why? The birth of John the Baptist, the last of the great prophets, is truly significant for the Christian faith. And why is that? His birth, my dear friends, evokes a sense of awe and wonder. Why? Because it underscores three poignant and even lofty realities. What are these? First, the mystery of divine election. God chooses whom he chooses. And when he makes a choice, he provides the necessary graces for that someone to fulfill his role in this life. Consider John the Baptist. He was chosen from the very instant of his conception in the womb of his mother, Elizabeth. And after he was born, he spent his time already in the desert. Can you imagine that? Not living in mainstream society, but in the desert, preparing for his manifestation as the one sent to prepare the way for the Messiah. It was not an easy call. It was not an easy role to play. But because God provided him the necessary graces, he was able to fulfill it. 
No wonder, as I have said that a, a while ago, that his birth is truly significant. Second, lofty reality, the gift of vocation. The birth of St. John the Baptist highlights the gift of vocation. Each one of us is called to holiness according to our state of life. John the Baptist has decided to choose an eremitic life in the desert. And he served God and discovered and gained his holiness there. So it is with us. Through the gift of vocation, we respond to the call of holiness through our respective states of life. In my case, through the priesthood. For most of us, for most of you, in the lifestyle of marriage. And for a few also, in single blessedness. The gift of vocation. And finally, the birth of John the Baptist highlights the importance of mission. We are not called for ourselves only. We are called to be saints and sent forth as heroes like John the Baptist. That's why, my dear friends, he witnessed to the reality his name signified by his life and by his death. Once again, the meaning is a name, John. According to Bible experts, and I learned this from no less than our CCTN um, chaplain and spiritual director, Father Don Don Aquino, the Seminario Mayor de San Carlos in-house exegete. In Hebrew, the name John means the Lord is gracious. And rightfully so, because, because of the birth of John the Baptist, the joy of Elizabeth and Zechariah was assured. Because of the birth of John the Baptist, the graciousness of God was felt by all those who listened to the transformative and powerful preaching of John. So many were changed. So many hearts were touched, including stony hearts of those who were part of the temple establishment. They were changed by his preaching. The graciousness of God. He lived up to that name. Okay, on selection nga makuha na to. By virtue of our baptism, we become God's adopted children. And we bear the dignified name Christian. So, bisag unsa ka modern sa imuhang name, okay lang na. Pero, ang generic name na itong tanang binunyagan kay Christian. We bear the name, the name above all names, the name of Christ. So, ang selection na to ana, we need to ask ourselves, how have I lived up to my dignified name as Christian? And to do that, my dear friends, on a daily basis, we need to ask ourselves, who does God want me to become? And second, in relation to that, what does God want me to do? Consider those questions on a daily basis. And I tell you, you will find your meaning and purpose in this life. Just like John the Baptist found his. And may the good Lord grant us the necessary graces to pursue our respective mission in life. And may the Eucharist few moments from now strengthen us to do just that. We all rise and we proclaim the faith of the apostles. Together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. 
On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. And from there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. The birth of John the Baptist brought great rejoicing, for it signaled the coming of human salvation. Let us pray to the Lord that we may listen to the voice of the forerunner of the Savior. Lord, make us a, prof a people fit for you. Lord, make us a people fit for you. May church leaders and missionaries serve as heralds of God's designs, even in cases when they become lonely voices in the desert, we pray. Lord, make us fit, fit for you. May agents of the government, soldiers and policemen, listen to John the Baptist's call to avoid corruption and extortion and be satisfied with their wages, we pray. Lord, make us a people fit for you. May we level the mountain of pride and self-sufficiency that the Lord may find a straight path to our hearts, we pray. Lord, make us a people fit for you. May we welcome and love the gifts of life, especially when it is weak and vulnerable, we pray. Lord, make us a people fit for you. May the Lord comfort the dying and welcome to the joy of paradise the souls of the faithful departed, we pray. Lord, make us a people fit for you. May the Lord found it beneficial to raise the venerable servant of God, Chofilo Kamomot Bishop, to the glory of the altars. We pray. Lord, make us a people for you. Father, you consecrated John the Baptist with a singular honor among those born of women. May we bear witness to Christ, your Son, by our repentance and deeds of righteousness. Through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray that my sacrifice and yours may become acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. For the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. We place these offerings on your altar, O Lord, to celebrate with fitting honor the nativity of Him, who both foretold the coming of the world, Savior, and pointed him out when he came, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. 
with you and with your spirit lift up your hearts we lift him up to the Lord let us give thanks to the Lord our God it is right and just it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks Lord Holy Father Almighty and eternal God through Christ our Lord in his precursor Saint John the Baptist we praise your great glory for you consecrated him for a singular honor among those born of women his birth brought great rejoicing even in the womb he leapt for joy at the coming of human salvation he alone of all the prophets pointed out the lamb of redemption and to make holy the flowing waters he baptized the very author of baptism and was privileged to bear him supreme witness by the shedding of his blood and so with the powers of heaven we worship you constantly on earth and before your majesty without end we acclaim <laughs> your spirit come upon these gifts to make them holy so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ before he was given up to death a death he freely accepted he took bread and looking up to heaven to you father he gave you thanks and praise he broke the bread gave it to his disciples and said take this all of you and eat it this is my body which will be given up for you when supper was ended he took the cup and looking up to heaven to you father he gave you thanks and praise he gave the chalice to his disciples and said take this all of you and drink from it this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant it will be shed for you and for all so that sins may be forgiven do this in memory of me the mystery of faith
as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and ministered to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, together with all the bishops, the clergy, and consecrated men and women everywhere. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, the glorious martyrs, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Dear friends, we now pray for the coming of God's kingdom, ardently preached by John and witnessed to by his life and martyrdom. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now I pray. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. We now offer each other the sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Friends, behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are invited to partake of the sacred banquet of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. spiritual communion my Jesus I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally come at least spiritually into my heart I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you never permit me to be separated from you 
O oh my God, my only hope. I have placed all my trust in you, and I know I shall not be disappointed. Having feasted at the banquet of the heavenly Lamb, we pray, O Lord, that finding joy in the nativity of St. John the Baptist, your church may know as the author of her rebirth, the Christ whose coming John foretold, who lives and reigns forever and ever. We now pray for our sick brothers and sisters and all those who are homebound. O God, who will that our infirmities be borne by your only begotten Son to show the value of human suffering, listen in kindness to our prayers for our brothers and sisters who are sick. Grant that all who are oppressed by pain, distress, problems, old age, and other afflictions may know that they are chosen among those proclaimed blessed and are united to Christ in his suffering for the salvation of the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus, dear. 
nobis santa dei genitrix. O dignibus amor promissionibus Christi. Oremus. Omnipotens em paterni Deus, qui gloriosi virgines matris Mariae corpus et animam, ut dignum fili tui habitaculum ifici mereretur, Spiritus Santo cooperante preparasti, da ut coius commemoratione leitamur, eius pia intercessione ab instantibus malis, et a morti perpetua liberemur, per iumdem Christum Dominum nostrum. My dear friends, John the Baptist was the herald of the Messiah. He announced the coming of Christ. In our little way, we can also play that role by making sure as much as possible that we would be able to include Jesus in our daily conversations. The Lord be with you. And we Please bow your heads and pray for God's special favors. May God bless you with every heavenly blessing. Make you always holy and pure in His sight. Pour out in abundance upon you the riches of His glory and teach you with the words of truth. May He instruct you in the gospel of salvation and ever endow you with fraternal charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Thank you and take care. Mr. and Mrs. Alfred and Julie Go and family. Mr. and Mrs. Rene and Nanit Avila and family. Engineer Frederick and Mrs. Wanda Fekabahog and family. 